ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك الحق المبين وشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد والدي آدم أجمعين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد We continue in Kitab al-Nikah by the great illustrious scholar, the great Imam al-Hafiz, Ahmed ibn Ali ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, who died 852 after the Hijrah of Mustafa alayhi salatu wa salam. And we continue in, we continue in Kitab al-Nikah in the chapter of Kafa'a. Kafa'a. We said that the meaning of the word al-Kafa'a is adequacy. The meaning of the word al-Kafa'a is adequacy. That's where you'll find the Ahl Ilm that they use the word. You'll find in the statements, if you listen to some of the lessons, as I listen to some of the lessons of uh, the chapter of Nikah in, in Muwatta by Imam Malik, when Ma Muhammad, Sheikh Muhammad Bazmu, Muhammad Bazmu, a couple of years ago, this is about three or four, about four years ago, was given it, explaining the chapter in Muwatta. And he will find you find statements that ulama say he who a laysa kufu an laysa kufu an laha or he a laysa kufu a lahu laysa kufu an or kufu an kufu an meaning she's not adequate he's not adequate for her or she's not adequate for him meaning there's a loss of kafaa meaning he's not adequate so what does it mean he who a laysa kufu laysa kufu laysa kufu meaning he's not adequate. We said from the conditions of adequacy was religion. We covered that already. So that was from, we said that's an ijma'ah. That's an ijma'ah. That's a consensus of condition and validity of marriage. Is what they had to be adequate in the aspect of a deen. There has to be some type of adequacy in deen and religion. Also, likewise, don't forget the details that we said. Because there's details in that. Details of what we mentioned in the last class, which is pertaining to what everyone, like we said, Meaning of what Allah Taala has made halal for a man of pertaining to marrying a, a believing woman, or a woman from the from the people of the book with the conditions that we mentioned, even though, like we said in the prior lessons, that I am on the opinion of what the great Imam Al Albani that he mentions with evidences and proofs that it's not applicable for the people of the book of these days, but if it's the other days, especially the women or the people of the book who have the belief that fornication and adultery and the likes of these matters are impermissible and forbidden, and they draw close to Allah by that type of belief, then this is the ihsan, or this is the, cha like, this is the chastity or the conviction or the belief of the women of the book. If they have that type of chastity, or they have what they chase, which is ihsan, or that the ifa, that chastity, or they have that condition of what they're muhsina, meaning they believe that fornication and adultery and these matters are unlawful and forbidden, then they are the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal for a, a believing man to marry with the other conditions that we mentioned. And also the conditions that we talked about in regards to fisk. For example, if a man is not praying, if he's not praying, as we said, and a woman is, he, he's not adequate for her in religion. Why? Because he's not praying. And we said that type of fisk is a fisk that will nullify your Islam upon the opinion of a lot of Ahl Ilm. So now the adequacy of religion is lost now because one has lost his adequacy. Why? Based upon whatever you want. Because they fell into a type of fisk. <coughs> and even kufr. There has to be adequacy as far as, like we said, in religion where it is a ijma' that a man and a woman, a believer man, a believer woman cannot marry a mushrik or mushrika. They cannot marry a polytheist. A woman cannot marry a polytheist man and a man cannot marry a polytheist woman because of the lack of adequacy in religion. We talked about numerous details in this regard. We said fisk also. You have two types of fisk, like we said last week. You have fisk of i'tiqad. Fisk in regards to belief. Fisk in regards to belief. Fisk in regards to belief. Likewise, a woman should not marry a man from Ahl Bid'ah. She should not. 
And a man should not marry a woman from Ahl Bid'ah. You'll find that, that some of our brothers and sisters do this. Say, I'm going to go to 15th Street, I'm going to go to 45th Street, I'm going to find me a good man that likes to take care of me, to take care of my bills and pay my bills. And he's upon, he's upon the most, whew, he's the most, he's upon the most evil beliefs, this belief system. But, but she excuses him because he says he takes care of me and he has good manners and good treatment, so khalas. That's when your issue of wala and bara kicks in. <laughs> so your issue of what we, what we talked about with Surah Thalatha, that's supposed to be now practiced and explained. So fisk, like we said, to just lay down, fisk, you have two types. You have fisk of i'tiqad, of the belief system, which is the most trivial and the most detrimental. So a person that's upon kufr, and also likewise, a lot of people think apostation. Apostation likewise is a type of fisk. It's a type of fisk. It's not permissible for a man to marry a woman that apostated. It's not permissible. And it's not permissible for a woman to marry what? A man that apostated. Right? Why? Because it's a type of fisk in what everyone in i'tiqad, in belief. To the point where that type of fisk where it's kufr, it's disbelief. And she he will be inadequate for her and she will be inadequate for him because of the lack of adequacy in religion. So all these are the details, like we said, which is called kafa'a, kafa'a, which is adequacy in deen, in religion, based upon all these details that we just gave. We also talked about the other condition of kafa'a, which is a musawa bin al-zawjain fin nasab. That you'll find that some of Ahl Ilm say that there's, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry everyone, that there's a, there has to be adequacy where there has some, to be some type of al-musawa, some equivalence and adequacy, if you not want to say for lack of better words, equality, in the aspect of liberation, what they call hurriya, meaning that they have to be both free. They have to be what? Both free, meaning that they cannot be be a slave. Is this a condition that's agreed upon amongst Ahl Ilm or not? We said that this condition isn't. We'll talk about it right now. For number one, we'll go back to the hadith of Barira. Hadith of Barira. Hadith Barira radiallahu an. The hadith of Barira is a tremendous hadith of the Prophet sallallahu And you'll find that that hadith lays down the criteria of conditions made inside of, inside of sales transactions. The sales transactions and even other affairs of the religion, such as what is made in marital contracts or sale contracts and all different types of contracts. Meaning, the hadith of Birira radiallahu anha, what took place where she was a raqiqa. She was a raqiqa. So now, right now we're talking about the second condition of kafa'a. The second condition of kafa'a, ya ma'ash al-ikhwat and wal-ikhwat also, is talking about liberation, being free. He cannot be, or she cannot be a slave. That's what we're talking about now. And like we said, keep in mind, as I keep always, and I stress this point, brothers and sisters, keep this in mind about what's pertaining to her, uh, slavery in Islam is not like the slavery of the West in the Eurocentric, filthy, inhumane, disgusting slavery of the West, of the European type of slavery. It's two different worlds. So keep that in mind. Because I don't want everybody to see, so now everybody be affected by the nation of Islam. See, the Arabs enslaved the black man and all this other nonsense that they try to put inside the hearts of the people. Not knowing and realizing that there's a difference between the slavery of Islam and the slavery of the Eurocentric oppression of what they did to black people or any other people. Not just black people, also a lot of other people. But in regards to that, Yama Ishal Ikhwa, Barira was a slave. She was a, she was a concubine. She, no, she was a slave. She was a slave. Let me say concubine means female. But she was a concubine or she was a slave. So we know that Allah Ta'ala revealed the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah in his book called فَكَاتِبُوهُمْ إِنْ عَلِمْتَ فِيهِمْ خَيْرًا That ayah. I think it's a surah al-Ahzab. I have to check it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, he says, if a person now, that they want their freedom, they want to be liberated, he says, 
there's a type of action or, or type of contract that if a person was a raqiq or a slave that he would make it's called mukataba 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 basically is where a person was under the jurisdiction or a slave was under the jurisdiction of a person where they was watching over them and they want to be liberated so they make a contract for them make a contract and that they pay a certain fee until finally they're free. The Kalas is done. So they have, they're liberated. Right? That type of, of, that type of transaction, that type of contract is called in Arabic mukataba. Mukataba. Meaning when a person is a slave or a person is under, the, under what they call riqa or he's a raqiq or he's a slave that he wants his freedom, he writes that contract to those who are in charge over him. Or her. They write the contract, they pay their fee, then they're done, it's free. What happened with Burira, and I'm going to tie everything together, what happened with Burira, this hadith of Burira, Burira wrote, she made mukataba. She wanted to perform mukataba because she was a slave at the time. When Barira went to Aisha, she went to the, our mother, Aisha radiallahu anha. And she was asking help for her. Asking help for Aisha to, to help finalize the mukataba, the contract. So Aisha, she showed her what she wanted of that particular transaction, mukataba, and Aisha agreed. I'll help you. So Aisha agreed that she was going to pay all the, the whatever debt or anything that had to be paid off in order for her freedom, for, her, for she could be requested for her freedom, what have you, what have you. However, know that as far as in the ahkam of riqqa, of a person being a slave, that if a person now, let's just say, the person who's the slave that he went to, the, let me matter of fact, we use this, we use this example. But went to Aisha. Aisha paid everything for her. What happens is th now the inheritance, because now when a, when a person is a slave in Islam, of course, that the inheritance also belongs to what? To the person who's in charge over that particular slave, the inheritance. Right? Tayyip. So Barira wanted to now, her freedom, she wanted to move it to Aisha. Aisha paid everything off. Now, however, in the ahkam, the wala of the inheritance moves to the other person who paid it off. Who paid it. Who paid her debts off and everything. The wala or the inheritance moves. The people who were in charge of Barira at the time said, no, we'll let you buy, but we'll let you pay off Barira and her, her duke mukataba. However, the wala, we want to keep it. We want to keep it. Meaning they're in charge for the inheritance and the benefits. Right? So the Prophet ﷺ heard this and he became upset. So the Prophet ﷺ said, they, they said that? So it happened with Barira, Hadith Aisha Barira. So the Prophet ﷺ came upon the minbar and he was, he was angry. He says, and, this, this, and what he said in the Hadith is now you'll see why the Prophet ﷺ made this as a criteria for all those different types of false rejected conditions and contracts. They are not accepted. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, he says, what is wrong with the people that they want? He said, أَيُّ شَطٍ لَيْسَ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ بَاطِلُ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِئَ شَطٍ He says, any condition that's not in the book of Allah, meaning the poses, the book of Allah, he says, it, it is false, he says it is rejected, and it's not accepted, they don't care if it's a hundred conditions. To the end of the hadith when the Prophet ﷺ said this right here. And this was talking about the, in this narration. The Prophet ﷺ made it clear. He said the wala is only for the person who freed the slave. Huh. So what was the Prophet ﷺ talking about, everyone? So the inheritance is for the one who what? Freed the person. But the point of the hadith likewise from the benefits of it is what? Is that the this type of condition that they wanted to, to put inside the contract, which had in it some type of oppression, in it. 
in which the Prophet ﷺ what? Totally alleviated and he totally removed it. That these type of conditions cause oppression. And that's the reason why he was so what? He, he was very severe and he was very stern in this regard of trying to what? Remove this type of oppression. So he clarified it in the hadith. So in the message of Allah Wasallam that he clarified in this narration, when Burira radiallahu anha attained, she ultimately attained her freedom. So khalas, she's free. <laughs> Burira, now keep in mind, Burira was a slave. She was married to someone else who was a slave. His name was Mughith. His name was Mughith radiallahu anha. Mughith was a slave likewise. So now, how does this have to do with what we're talking about now? Because when Burira was free, he, she became at a level that was higher than what? His husband. So now, is this marriage still valid or what? Based upon what we read in here, she's not what? Who alaysa kufu an laha. He's not adequate for her now, based upon this particular condition, right? Is that authentic? Is that correct or not? We say, no, it isn't. The marriage was still valid. Why? Because there's another narration of the Prophet ﷺ where when she became at a higher level, where she was free, Barira, she went to the Messenger of Allah. Because she, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny and it's sad at the same time, the story. It's funny, but it's sad. They say it's mubkin wa muthik fi fayan wahid. It makes a person cry and it makes a person laugh at the same time. But anyway, so Barira went to the Prophet. This is a, another narration to show that the marriage was still what? It was still valid. She went to the Messenger of Allah and said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I don't want to be married to him no more. So that shows that she had the what? The choice, the alternative. So that's, that's the, the meaning of the chapter. You go to the title chapter, what does it say, everyone? Adequacy and what? Alternative. Choice. So that means she had a choice. So did, she didn't ask the message of Allah, oh message of Allah, I'm free now, he's still a slave. Do I still, is the marriage still valid? She didn't say that. She already had the belief that what? It's still valid, but I don't want to be with him no more. So she went to the message of Allah and made it clear that what? That the marriage is still valid. I, marriage, everything is Still valid, still stands. However, I don't want to be with him. So this is to let you know here clearly in the hadith that it's still valid. How, why? This is this kind of, it's funny, but it's, it's a little sorrowful at the same time. So Mughith came to the Prophet Sallallahu Mughith, her husband. So Mughith started crying. Oh. <laughs> he started crying. And he was crying real profusely. He was crying a very, he was crying severely. Because he loved her. He loved her. He loved uh, Barira. So he came to the Prophet So he's saying to the Messenger of Allah, I love her. I want to stay with her. I want to work it out. I want to work the marriage out. So that clearly shows that the marriage is what, everyone? What? It was valid. It was valid. So going back to the condition here, that shows that what, everyone? That, that that's not a condition that's so that's agreed upon. As far as what? Liberation. A woman being free. So if one, so a woman that's free can marry a what? A man that is a slave or vice versa. Based upon this hadith. However, they have the choice. What was that? So they had the what? They had the choice. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? However, do you want, everyone want me to finish the story or what? I'll just, I'll just stop it. <laughs> All right, finish the story quickly. So what happened with Mughith, Mughith went to the Prophet Sallallahu was crying severely. So the Prophet Sallallahu this is to show his good manners, Sallallahu This is to show how beautiful he was, Sallallahu so the Prophet ﷺ took time out to deal with this matter. So people would say how the religion is violent. Muhammad ﷺ was violent. This religion was violent. This is just a religion of chaos and mass hysteria, wreaking havoc on society. This is to show how Messenger of Allah, how beautiful of a person he was. So the Prophet ﷺ seen, uh, seen Mughith crying. He's seen him. So he felt sorry for him. 
So he went to Barira. He said, Barira, you see him crying? Like, Barira, you don't want to work it out? <laughs> Barira. So just to let you know how the so message of Allah was very what? Very kind-hearted man. Very, very soft, kind-hearted. He said, Barira, they come and cry. He wants to be with you. He wants to stay with you. So listen to what Barira said. Are you commanding me to be with him, O Messenger of Allah? Are you commanding me to be with him? Stay with him? Listen to what the Prophet said. No, innama ana shafi. He said, Verily, I'm no 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 no. He said, I'm just a person that's trying to sort it out. That's it. I'm just trying to sort out the problem. I'm just trying to intercede. I mean I'm basically trying to rectify the problem. That's all. So when Barira heard this, said, Are you not commanding me? He said, No, I'm not commanding you. So Barira said, Okay, I don't want to be with him no more. <laughs> Stop it all. So he left the man crying. So he had to move on. So she said, I didn't what? She fakhtarat al firaq. So she remained, she, she kept her what? She wanted to keep her freedom and she what? Left off the relationship. So. What happened with the story is to show, number one, how the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi was very kind-hearted. He took time out, especially if, if those who refute those who say that Islam is a rebellious or the Muhammad was this and he was that. The message of Allah took time out for something that was what? Between what happened between two couples. It took the time out to try to sort it out between them. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So what happened was, in the story what happened with Burira, this clearly shows that what? The Hurriya or liberation is not clearly what a condition that stipulated in the validity of a marriage. Rather, the person has the choice. The woman has the choice, or the man has the choice, or what have you. Even the woman, she has a choice. She has a choice. She could go, like we saw, likewise, to maybe the qadi or the judge and have the marriage, have the marriage annulled and have it nullified. So is it clear what I'm saying so far, everyone? What time is it? What time is it? Just came in. We pray 507, I think. We pray 507. Play. <coughs> Play. So that is to show what, everyone? That that condition is not a affair that's agreed upon. Rather, you'll find that what comes in the authentic sunnah actually what goes against this condition. But however, Ahl al mention it in these, these chapters to show that and to, to clearly manifest that a person is not coerced or he or she, that the woman does have a choice and a man likewise. Because you know there are errors from those, the, from those ambiguities that likewise are widespread and running rampant around or, or trying to taint about the sort of the, or the purity of Islam is to say that they're fixed marriages. They are forced upon people. This condition right here shows that what? That in certain circumstances, the woman still has a choice. She has a choice. And rather, it's in a lot of circumstances. She has the choice to either stay or, wanna, or what? Or to say that, no, I don't want to stay with him based upon this or what have you. In which we'll discuss likewise in regards to nesab, in regards to lineage. That's what we'll discuss coming up next. So in regards to what is pertaining to liberation or being freed, that, like we said, is not a, a, a condition of kafa'a, of adequacy, that's agreed upon. It's not. It's not agreed upon. Even though what certain people will say, that which is the strongest opinion is not considered, especially in the aspect of what? Freedom or liberation. It's not considered. But the woman or the man has a choice. If with one was freed and the other one, let's just say, stayed as a raqiq, as a concubine slave, one became higher than the other as far as, as far as inadequacy, then they don't have to stay. Rather, they have the choice if they want to annul the marriage. But the marriage is still what? It's still valid. Is it clear what I'm saying so far, everyone? So that's the reason why Ahl al mentioned these type of conditions in kafa'a in the aspect of marriage. I think he's calling the event. Man. I think he is calling the event. I don't hear him. He just went outside. But it's time for the event. I just came in. Came like two minutes ago. I think he is gone. He just went outside. Yeah, I don't hear it either. Then third condition of kafa'ah, and this will stop, 
is what they call al musawa bayna al zawjay fi nasab of adequacy you call the event i didn't we, we was trying to listen to him we didn't hear it adequacy between the two spouses in lineage in lineage now is that a condition in in adequacy likewise or not that also likewise is not considered as far as a, a prerequis prerequisite for the validity of a marriage. It's not. For it being valid or not. It's not. Why? What's the proof of the Kitab of Sunnah? Based upon the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu of what happened with Fatima bint Qais. Fatima bint Qais. Fatima bint Qais, also which was mentioned in the chapter, is the chapter of what happened with with Abu Jahm and Muawiyah, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. The Prophet ﷺ chose for Fatima bin Tuqais in the hadith someone who was not from the Arab. He was not, he was not an Arabi. He was not Arabi. He was not Arabi in some narrations we'll talk about, other narrations that shows that certain Sahaba who were married to others who was not an Arabi, who was not from the Arab. They, they were an A'jami, there was a non-Arab, they were married to Arabs and likewise vice versa. There's narrations that establishes this. And you'll also find there were women who are from the greatest and, greatest and noblest, the most honorable of lineages. And we know from the honorable, those honorable lineage, lineages is one being from the tribe of Quraysh. The tribe of Quraysh, which was a noble lineage during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, was the best of lineages. Fatima bint Qais was Qurashiyah. She was from Quraysh, which was a high lineage. A lot high, noble, well-known lineage. And the Prophet ﷺ commanded her to marry someone who was a free slave. He was a free slave. Who's that free slave? Usama. Usama bin Zayd. Not only is a free slave, he was a free slave, the son of a free slave. So that shows that what, everyone? That lineage is not a prerequisite for what? For marriage. It's not. Only thing that's a prerequisite is taqwa of Allah. If a person fears Allah to bring with the other. That's it. No more, no less. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? That is what a person would command to marry and not to consider what, whether or not he's an Arabi or whether or not he's from his lineage is high and that lineage of that individual is what is low or it's not considered, or what have you. Rather, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, you'll find of those who offered her in marriage were from people who had high lineages, such as Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, uh, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Proposed to her. And also likewise, Abu Jahm bin Meem. Abu Jahm. Abu Jahm. We know the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that famous hadith in which you'll find that a lot of the people, those deviant masajid, they like to hide. They like to hide this hadith. <laughs> they like to hide it. Due to the fact, if you notice in the hadith, she came to the message of Allah seeking his advice. So who do I marry? So she was seeking advice, and she was seeking his, 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 uh, his consultation of who exactly would she marry, who she should marry, who's, who's suitable for her. طيب. So the Prophet ﷺ said this. Listen to what he said. He says, As for Muawiyah, فصعلوك, لا مال له. As for Muawiyah, he has no money. He doesn't have money to take care of you. He doesn't have any money to take care of you. To be adequate and to take care of your needs. He doesn't have the money. La mala lahu. Su'luk. And as for Abu Jahm, Abu not Jahl, Jahm. Abu Jahm, Fala Yadul Asa and Atiqihi. He doesn't leave the stick off of his, his shoulder. He doesn't keep the stick off his shoulder. What do I mean by that? Ahl ilm say it breaks down to two meanings. Number one is that he likes to travel a lot. He used to try he likes to travel a lot. Another meaning is that he hits his women. He beats them. He beats his women. 
So based upon this hadith, you would think that the Prophet ﷺ was backbiting. Yeah. So because everyone likes to say this, backbiting, stay away from backbiting, backbiting, stay away. No doubt, the also is to stay away from backbiting. However, when someone's seeking your advice, it switches. It goes now to what? Advice. So now it's advice. It's just like it doesn't make sense. If someone said to you, someone's a kleptomaniac. They like to steal out of people's wallets and go in their house and homes and you invite them in. And that person who's inviting in there, your house is a klepto. He likes to put things in his pocket, go through people's pockets, or go through your pants pocket, go through your wallet, take your cards, or take your money, or whatever, right? Type. you have a friend with you that knows this, right? Knows that person has a sickness. So now, this person who's a kleptomaniac comes in your house, steals your money, steals this. And your friend said, said to you, yeah, I knew he was a kleptomaniac. I just didn't want to say nothing to you. You say, why are you saying nothing to me? Oh, I didn't want to backbite. Does that make any sense? I didn't want to backbite him. No, here it's incumbent upon you to what? Tell me. So you, you avoid and keep your, 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 you keep your brother or sister from a danger, from happening. If this is the case of, in, in the aspect of mere dealings, what about the aspect of affairs about the hellfire of people who are deviated in a religion? Hmm. That's why we say it's permissible to what? Say, specify certain people's names out of advice for the people so they could be what? So we could keep them free from a danger that might harm them. So, in this particular narration, we'll stop here. The Prophet ﷺ said clearly, he says, as for so-and-so, he's su'luk. Su'luk, he didn't say su'fuk. He says su'luk. <laughs> he says su'luk, not su'fuk. Stupid behind the fitness, su'fuk safiq. I've never seen stupid fitness like I see this today. any rate, no, he called it already. Somebody, no, he don't know. He didn't know that he called it already. Tayyip, in regards to what, what happened was, he says, as far as Muawiyah, he's Su'luk. Su'luk. I mean, he has no money. So, and he also said about Abu Jahm that he what? That he likes to beat his women. So the Prophet ﷺ said, marry Usama bin Zayd. Usama bin Zayd. So the Prophet ﷺ here in this instance, he did not take in consideration what? Lineage at all. All he wanted to take in consideration was what? With a person whether or not he was religious and he was upholding the correct religion and propagating that and stood fast upon that and that was it. No, I know. So he already called it. Uh, Amir already called it. Five. And that's the reason you'll find that Ahl al-Ilm say in regards that riba backbiting switches into advice in six places. Ghiba tatahawal ila nasiha. In six places. And I'll stop here, inshallah. That backbiting switches. It doesn't become backbiting. Rather, you'll be rewarded if you do it. It switches. And it becomes advice. In six instances. Where it says in the poetry, القدح ليس بغيبة في ستة متظلما ومعرف ومحذر ومجاهد فسقا ومستفت ومن طلب الإعادة في إزالة منكر says in the poetry gather all six places where where backbiting becomes advice the first place is Ridiculing someone is not riba in six places. Firstly, mutavallim, mutavallimin, mutavallim, mutavallim meaning mushtakin, the one who's complaining or the one who goes to a person to have an oppression removed off, off of them. For example, of what happened to the Sahabiya, clear example it is. When she went to the Prophet and said, that my, my, my husband is shaheeh. That he's miserly, like he's, he's uh, not stingy, but he's like, um, astaghfirullah. That he's frugal. He's frugal. He's, he's tight. He's shaheeh. He says he doesn't give me what suffices for me and my family. 
So the, she went to the Prophet ﷺ and had the, that type of oppression. What? Removed herself because she was not receiving enough sustenance that would maintain herself and her what? Her family. So she mentioned this type of aib or this discrepancy about her husband in order to have the oppression, what, everyone? Removed. So she complained to him. She said, my husband's shahih. Shahih means tight visiting, tight, frugal, right? Tight. So that's the first place. The second one is mutadalliman wa mu'arraf. When you need to know who a person is. Someone who you don't know who they are. Someone who you do not know who they are. You need to know who they are. For example, someone comes to you for a job. You want to know who they are. You ask around, who's so-and-so? Is he a good worker, reliable, truthful? And a person, of course, now when you, you've been requesting this, this particular instance, you have to speak the truth, right? So you're going to have to say what you know about him, whether he's what, trustworthy, or whether he's a what? He's untrustworthy, or he's a liar or not. You're going to have to say it now. Someone's asked you advice, so it will be rectify his affairs, as far as in his, his business, or what have you. Right, everyone? So you can't say here in this instance, Oh, I, 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 I don't want to tell you. I don't want to be backed by nobody. Does it make any sense? Is it clear, everyone, so far? Mu'arraf. So now we want you to know who a person is. Mu'arrafin wa muhadharin. Muhadhar. A person who's being warned against. A warned against as far as in, in bid'ah, or a person that's propagating deviance or calling to it or calling to some type of deviance, or when they had to be warned against even in certain aspects of sins. For example, like I just gave an example, a person might be a kleptomaniac, likes to steal out of people's pockets, or he likes to pickpocket people, or he likes to go to people's houses and steal out of their pockets. As I know, subhanAllah, something that did happen to somebody I knew, that he liked to go up in people's houses, and when your back was in turn, he, he put his hand in your, in your throat pocket and take your money out your pocket, out of your wallet. Like, if the person knows this affair about a person, it's incumbent upon you to tell them. But it has to be, of course, out of sincerity and for Allah that you're telling the person a warning. It cannot be for some ulterior motive because you didn't like them. No. You're doing it and giving them advice. Firstly, number one, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know 100% for sure that this type of sickness or this type of affair has been established before you start warning. Of course. So you can't be a based upon assumption. Well, I, I heard that. No, you have to have 100% cu cu uh, uh, clarity. Sure, now listen, this person is known. That if I've heard from five, for example, five, six, seven different people. Every time he goes up in somebody's houses, his money is missing. The money is gone. So be careful. So number one is what? Muhaddadin. The, th the fourth is what? Mujahid and Fisk, one that broadcasts their sin. A person that broadcasts their sin has no ghiba. And that would let you know how when a person is broadcasting their sins on social media, you, we can't cover it up for you because you exposed your own self. When you said on social media, I was walking down the street with my boyfriend and we were kissing and hugging, you, bra you boasted and bragged about your sin. So now there's no ghiba for you. So someone right now said, well, so and so was, they was walking, well, they said it clearly. That's their boyfriend. They smoked cigarettes. They were drinking. They were going to the club. There's no ghiba for them. So a person now can't come and say, well, you don't backbite your brother and sister. After they broadcast it to a thousand people. You understand, everyone? So there's no cover up for their sin because they didn't cover it up for themselves. And we know the hadith of the Prophet, where it says that all my ummah be forgiven except for what? Those who broadcast their sins. That's what it means for the likes of me. I don't understand why people don't cover up their sins. We're about to start, and I'm about to stop. I've got two more conditions, and then I'm stopping. Those who broadcast their sins is covered up, except uh, uh, those who are forgiven, except those who broadcast their sins. So I don't know why people go on bragging about their sins. If you're going to do something, sister, you get weak in your jilbab, and, I've, and says, if this, I've seen this with my own eyes. Sister, if you get woke and you're weak and you're just bad, you're sneaking out with your girlfriends, and you put on a dress and some shoes, and your hair is out now, why do you have to take pictures of it and brag about it on social media? If Allah covered it up, cover it up. Keep yourself covered. Why? For what? If you're weak, you got weak, and inshallah, I hope you don't die in that state, because that's a terrible state to die in. 
You don't want to meet a lost sister with a weave in your hair with some high heel shoes on with a tight dress on. That's a very, that's not a good state to meet a law in. That's, that's very dangerous. But if a law, t if you're being tested, don't brag about it on social media. Just keep it out. Why you got to take pictures and tell the whole dunya that you're sinning? So that particular person is what? There's no ghibah for him. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Mujahid and fisk. Now another person who has no uh, there's no ghibah or speeches in the siha is a person seeking a religious fatwa. Mustaftin. Mustaftin. Now I'll give the details of that later. And I'm going to rest on the last one. The last one is a person that seeks the help of another person in order to have evil removed. So here, ghibah switches intent to, to advice. That's the last condition. That's the six. So all these conditions here are what? Are instances where ghibah switches, switches, in, in, switches to advice. So that is, like we said, all are gathered up in the poetry which says, Al-Qadhu laysa bi ghibatin fi sittatin mutadhalliman wa mu'arrafin wa mu'hadharin wa mujahidin fisqan wa mustaftin wa man talab al-i'anati fi izalati munkarin. So it's all gathered up in that poetry. So if ghibah switches here into advice, here in this instance. Okay, everyone? However, the origin of backbiting is, it is a tremendous major sin. All right, everyone? Keep that in mind. However, that is not in all cases. In certain cases, if vice is switched to what? Is, I mean, excuse me. Reba switches to what? If vice. So we have to learn how to put everything in its proper place. Okay, everyone? So don't listen to the Ikhwanis who also say, Oh, Ruth the Bilal is backbiting. Ruth the Bilal is backbiting. So we say that the Prophet Sallallahu when Fatima bin to Qais asked, when she, was, uh, when she asked the message of Allah about those two people, he said, one beats his wife. I don't advise you to marry him. And the other one, what? The other one has not enough money to take care of you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did he backbite or what, everyone? Did he backbite? No. Here, what did he do? He gave advice. I recommend that you marry Usama ibn Zayd. Why? Because he's more suitable for you in religion. Fine, right, we'll stop here. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه سبحانك الله بحمدك شر ولا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وتوب إليك. Any questions about the lesson? Anyone? Any questions?